Alright hello guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about the pattern for the rest of September but before I get started with this video though I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description especially the Instagram which I'll have in the pinned comment. You can send in photos and videos actually to, you can either DM them to us or you can tag us in the photos or videos and we will be sharing some of those during the weekly forecast from here on out. Alright now let's get right into things. We are looking at our NOAA's outlook here for the six to 10 day forecast because I wanted to talk about the rest of the pattern for September. I was thinking uh, I do the weekly forecast, monthly forecast, seasonal forecast. I might as well like cut the months in half and kind of talk about patterns every once in a while for the ends and beginnings of months. So we might be doing a beginning of the October pattern video as well. If you do kind of like this style, I think that, you know, my viewers will appreciate this type of video. So we're probably going to be doing these from now on. But I wanted to talk about this because a lot of people have been talking about, where's this pattern change you've been talking about? Well, uh, this is kind of one of those situations where it did bust uh, for the most part because we did think that the pattern was going to switch. We did think that the oscillations were going to switch and kind of stay switched, but it looks like there's going to be much more of like a quick switch and then kind of all over the place. And at this point, it's we don't really know what the oscillations are going to do. Sometimes they get really confused where they're looking up, down, up, down, and it's really unclear what's going to happen. So that's why we haven't had many long-range or medium-range forecasts recently because it has been all over the place. So here's what you need to know. During the next 6 to 10 days, according to NOAA, we're still going to be dealing with the warmth in the east and then cold in the west. So probably a lot of snow again for the Rockies and higher elevation areas in the west. We'll be continuing to make videos on those as well, by the way. But we are going to be dealing with more warmth in the east through the next 6 to 10 days, which is the 25th through the 29th. Uh, this was made yesterday, so this is going to be kind of the 5 to 9 day outlook for us. But it was 6 to 10 from the 19th. Now, I also wanted to show you the 8 to 14 day outlook. So this is the same thing except from the 27th till the 3rd of October. Now, we are going to be dealing with, again, still more cold out there west and still just the heat in the east. So you can see uh, we will be dealing with some cool downs for the northern and eastern United States. Like right now along the east coast, it has been quite cold the last few days. Even though if you look at it on kind of a 5 to 7 day period, it's warm overall because it's kind of like two days of warmth then two days of cold, then two more days of warmth, which equals overall warmth over that, you know, uh, six day period or whatever. So that's kind of how that works. So this doesn't mean that it's going to be hot the whole time, but for the most part, most of the time it will be hot. And then in the West, most of the time it will be cold, but it doesn't mean there won't be some days that end up being warm. That's how it works when you're looking at a longer, uh, range of days on average. Now, Here's their three to four week outlook. Now, keep in mind, this one came out a little bit earlier, so the accuracy might not be as, uh, it might not be as recent, obviously. So the, the accuracy might be a little bit less than those other ones, and it's a longer range forecast anyway, so already it will be a little less accurate, but they are calling for more warmth to head out west and then cold to finally enter the northeast. I'm not going to go out and, you know, proclaim this as truth quite yet. I want to, with the teleconnections kind of struggling, I want to kind of dial down on the long range forecast. I'll still be doing the monthly forecast, still be doing the seasonal forecast as we have had success in the past. The September forecast uh, wasn't <laughs> wasn't one of those success stories necessarily. Uh, there were some big problems with that one, but the summer forecast was great. Um, I haven't shown the results of that one, but it's almost perfect. You can go back and look at that almost perfect and a lot of our monthly forecasts as well during the summer were great so it was a fluke the September forecast but we're going to be dealing with um we're going to not be calling for cooldowns until we know that the teleconnections are going to be going negative or positive because the models have been struggling to pick up on that so that's kind of what you can expect according to NOAA for the rest of September and into early October so I hope that was easy to follow now we're going to be looking at what the teleconnections are showing um and by the way, look, if you look, I'll zoom in on it, but if you look at what the past has been, this shows you the past, what they were forecasting in the yellow, and then what actually happened along the black line, you can see the struggle, you can see how far off it has been um, from the GFS in the past with these, um, you know, 14 day outlooks and 10 day outlooks. 
So you can see how far off it's been. That's why we're kind of taking this with a grain of salt now. Um, after the most recent failure to kind of forecast what was going to happen, I figured that we're going to, again, pace things back just a little bit for now until they get, you know, a handle on things better. But right now what it's showing is we went negative for a little bit, and this is the NAO, by the way, which is the North Atlantic Oscillation. And usually this will, if it's in a negative phase, will bring colder temperatures to the eastern United States. And really what happened is we saw the NAO go negative for a little bit, and we did see colder temperatures along the coast and in New England. Uh, I live along the Virginia coast, so I felt it. It was below average temperatures here. So the negative NAO, we did feel it, and it's gone back to kind of neutral. And they show it dropping off back to negative, but it's another case of, you know, I'll believe it when I see it type scenario because uh, at this point, uh, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see. It looks to pop back positive or neutral and then go negative. So we're just going to take this one with a grain of salt. We could start October off with a negative NAO, though, which would bring a little bit of a pattern switch up. It would be a change. But here's your AO. It looks to go positive over the next few days and then back negative. They've struggled with this one as well, but not quite as much as the NAO. So once this one works similar to the NAO, where negative means colder in the east, warmer in the west, usually. Um, and positive would mean warmer in the east, colder in the west. So again, we showed that we're looking at warmer temperatures in the east and colder in the west. That's because this is going positive and the NAO is going neutral. But our next teleconnection tells the entire story. Um, PNA. This one is positive right now, but I mean, you can hardly tell. Usually a positive PNA would be warmer than normal conditions along the west coast of the United States, and then negative or neutral would be colder than normal conditions along the west coast of the United States. So this teleconnection is almost purely based on, um, on temperatures along that coast out there. So when it's positive, we're usually seeing warmer than normal conditions out there, and it looks to go neutral or negative here in the coming days, and that's kind of what we're seeing with those colder than normal conditions along the coast and then pop back positive and then back negative. This is what I'm talking about. You know, it's all over the place and we're going to have to wait until we see consistency with this before, you know, really making, uh, you know, being like, okay, there's going to be a cool down. Then there's going to be a warm up here, you know, 10 days out. Plus, um, you can only do that when the models are really doing a good job. And right now they're just not. So and that is quite typical of this time of year. They do struggle this time of year historically in September. That's kind of the transition month, so they do struggle a little bit here. Now, here's your geopotential height, and this is going to show us where troughs and ridges are. When we see those lines go south, dip south, and then back up north at the end of that, that's a trough right there. You can see one is right there along the western United States. That's a good example of a decent trough. And then you see ridges to its east and west, which is where they go north. So that's kind of the warmer temperatures heading further and further north. Um, now, this is a typical, what I would call, negative PNA pattern. We do have a, looks like, positive NAO here as well. It's kind of a neutral AO, so that's a bad look. That's yesterday. I did take these pictures yesterday because I was going to make this video yesterday, but I made it today instead. Now, September 25th, things to look a little more positive. It looks like a trough is heading into the central United States, and we are starting to get... A little bit of a positive PNA there. Again, the teleconnections are looking like it's going to go positive very, very briefly as far as the PNA is concerned. And that is a really good uh, negative NAO look as well. If you look at those, that ridge there in between Greenland and Canada, that is a very, very uh, classic negative NAO look. We do have a positive AO right here, though. So that's kind of bad. But next frame, uh, again, PNA goes back negative very, very quickly, and then we see that trough enter the western United States and then ridge again in the east by the 28th of September. So this is why there's so much challenge with the forecasting because these teleconnections are switching so fast that they're not even, you know, they don't even have enough time to set their pattern in. So that's why we're not really seeing cold enter the east because it looks like it's going to, and then the pattern switches back to where it's more favorable for the west to turn cold. And that usually as of recently, lasts longer than the cold switch for the east. So that's why we're having so much difficulty here. And then uh, I just wanted to mention that they are showing the same type of pattern there for the 5th of October as well at the end of the run. That's when it becomes a little bit harder to see far out, obviously. So this is a little lower confidence that far out. But for now, we don't really see a change in the pattern. I, I don't, I'm not seeing it yet. And when I do, obviously, I'll make a video on it. But as of right now, there is no change in, of the pattern in sight. 
And again, I did make a video saying the pattern was going to switch and it did look like it was going to switch. But again, the models have been struggling to tell what the teleconnections are going to do far out. And they really let me down on this one because they uh, they switched it up really fast. Now here's your temperatures compared to normal. I just wanted to show this at the end of this video. And you can see this is some examples showing even though the pattern looks warmer, this doesn't mean that we can't get colder than normal conditions. Now, hear me out. Overall, from now till about the 5th of October, things are looking very warm for the eastern United States. Don't even uh, get confused there. But there is certain dates here where we do see colder than normal conditions briefly enter the eastern United States, even though the pattern doesn't look favorable of it. So this is just goes to show that this doesn't mean that you're not going to see cold temperatures at all. Now, Pennsylvania and interior New England, as well as uh, some regions of the northeast coast there are seeing below normal conditions here on the 25th of September, according to the GEFS. Now, this isn't like a promise. I can't tell you five days out for sure that we'll see colder than normal conditions, but there could be colder than normal conditions at times. Now, this is what the pattern will mostly look like. This is the 2nd of October, and this is really what the teleconnections are looking like. Cold for the central and western United States, and then warm overall for the eastern United States. That looks overall to be the pattern for the next the next quite a while, at least. And then you can see by the 5th of October, we do see colder than normal conditions enter the northeast again. So, again, there could be times when we see colder than normal conditions. And I will make updates on when we could see colder than normal conditions. But for now, we don't really have solid dates that we know for sure it's going to happen. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this cleared up things. People have been asking, where's that pattern change? Where's that pattern change? And I hope this video really cleared up what went wrong with that video and why that we haven't seen that happen. And it's just a part of weather. We don't, it's not an exact science. We don't have it completely figured out, obviously. So that's, things like this do happen. And I apologize for it, but we're going to just continue to work on our accuracy in the future and make sure that mistakes like this don't happen again. And we're going to learn from this. Uh, that's how it goes with this. It's always a learning curve with these types of things. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.